you're going to be on TV. You're back <laughs> on YouTube. Good morning and welcome to Overly Vest Nurseries. It's a rather chilly morning, a little bit overcast. And as you see here in the nursery, we're getting ready to send out some more of our plants to our partnering garden centers that are located right throughout our region. That's the mid-Atlantic and northeastern states of the US. And here at this time of year, we're sending out, as you see, some of the very early plants that will get our gardens off to a great start. Elsewhere in the nursery, we're busy producing plants that come in at different times of the year. And in fact, we grow over 2,000 different varieties, ones that have been especially selected for their performance here in our mid-Atlantic and northeastern states. Now, as you look at this video and hopefully view other ones elsewhere on this channel too, if you come across any that you like and find them informative and helpful, it would be really great if you could kindly click Click the like button too because of course that helps other people to find that information as well. So I'm going to take you now on a little tour of the nursery to show you what we do behind the scenes and then show you what you can do in your home garden in your situation to get the very best from some of our plants. And as you can see, I've moved down now to one of our production houses. These are what we call tunnels. They're covered by this plastic covering, which protects the plants until they're big enough and hardy enough to be able to be sent out to the garden centers and planted in your garden. They're doing very nicely, but it's going to be a while yet until they're really ready for you to take and plant in your garden. One of the things you might be interested to see is this is how we protect them during the winter time. These houses are not heated and when the temperatures get really cold, what we do is we watch the weather forecast daily. And then if it looks like we're gonna get cold nights, we use some of this insulation winter blanket to cover them up and protect them. And then of course, on a day like today, we unfold it so that they're able to grow and continue to put on all of this gorgeous growth. These are, of course, the little colored leaf forms of coral bells or sometimes called alum roots. Absolutely fantastic and very valuable plants for us to grow in our gardens. And one of the remarkable things that's happened during the last 20 years or so is that breeders have developed really what I would describe as an explosion of really fantastic varieties. Varieties that take us through a very wide range of foliage color. Foliage color that lasts in the garden regardless of what the weather conditions are. They also have developed ones now with beautiful little dainty flowers and what's really truly remarkable is they've been able to combine all of that gorgeous foliage color with ones that flower well too and so that we're getting the best of both worlds. They are so valuable and there's many different varieties and probably more coming and part of our job really here is to trial and test them and to find out the best performers for this region and right here is one of my favorite varieties. This is Euchra caramel, a variety that turned up as a chance seedling in northern France in 2003. This is what I would describe as a good doer. It does very well in the landscape. It's nice and vigorous and easy to grow and a really good reliable variety that goes through a series of changes with its foliage during the year. Now it's going to be a little while until these plants are ready to send out. We're going to space them, we'll then ventilate these tunnels, we'll take the plastic off, we'll harden them off and then you can look forward to seeing these and lots of other really good varieties in your garden centre. But if you then get to plant and enjoy these in your gardens, there's a couple of things I want to show you that you might want to try out at home to get the very best from them. Now, I'm a big proponent 
of using them in planters, in window boxes, pots, decorative pots, basically anywhere we are able to use that gorgeous, long-lasting foliage. They stand up very well to fluctuating temperatures and give such a valuable, long-lasting display. I also find out to my surprise that the foliage lasts very well when you use them in floral arrangements too. And if you haven't used any yet, snip off a few leaves, put them in a vase of water and watch them. You'll be amazed how long the foliage will last. Literally for seven or eight or maybe more weeks, you'll change the water, put in the leaves, change the water, put in the leaves, put in other things, and you'll find that the foliage is still going strong after all of that length of time. But of course, it's outdoors here in the garden that we primarily grow them. And this is what I wanted to show you because now in early spring, there's a couple of things that are worth knowing about and some things that you might want to try out with your decorative coral bells. Now, <laughs> I hasten to add that this is the worst possible time to show you the plants. They've been out here all winter, buffeted by the winter weather, and they're not looking really representative of what they would look like in your garden, at certainly at other times of the year. And if you take a few minutes and scroll through elsewhere on this channel, the videos that are on there, you'll see the plants when they're really looking like they should be. And also, of course, if you visit some of the garden centers, you'll be able to see all of the plants there. But this is a good time of year to show you what you can do with your plants when you have them in the garden. And this is the variety that I was showing you earlier this is Heuchera caramel. As you see, it's got all of this crispy foliage on it now at this time of year. So what you can do is to just go through with your pruners and remove this old foliage because inside the crown, when you get in here now, you'll see that it's busy producing new fresh growth. And that's what we want to try and encourage. So you just go through with pruners or a knife and just remove these old leaves, the old flower heads and just basically clean up the clump a little bit. That'll help to freshen it up and make it look nicer but also you can get it going so that it'll produce some nice young fresh growth in a couple of weeks and of course be much prettier than it's looking now. And then once you remove all of the old leaves back to the crown, just rake up any of the remaining foliage that's there. That not only just helps to make the place where you have them a little prettier, but it also removes any possibility of overwintering disease spores that might be on the foliage. Now, one of the great things about coral bells is that really, they're not really affected by too many diseases. Perhaps a little bit of mildew from time to time, and by removing the old foliage like this, you're starting off nice and clean. And then, at this time of year, just as the growth's beginning, if you like, you can put down a little bit of a well-balanced, slow-release fertilizer. Now, if you've watched any of our videos before, you'll hear me talk about putting on a handful or so around the perimeter of the plant. One of the things I find about coral bells is they don't really need a whole lot of nutrition because if you've got the ground conditions right for them, they get plenty of nourishment out of it. So instead of putting on a handful, what I do is put on about a hand, about half a handful. Just shake that around the perimeter. So a light dressing of fertilizer. Follow the descriptions and the directions on your packet and probably put on about half of that rate to get them off. And then of course, with a rake, just key it in lightly around the soil. And that's all you really need to do. Except there's one other thing that's important that I want to show you. 
and that is that to keep them going they really ought to be divided about every two to three years and that's not that hard to do but I'm going to show you how to divide your coral bells because you see one of the things about coral bells and indeed other perennials too is that if they're growing in the same spot for a long time they can tend to get congested in and around the crown the center part begins to deteriorate and the perimeter of the plant tends to remain to be vigorous so once you dig them up and split them or divide them as we call it you're invigorating the clump and that's what we're going to do now but first <laughs> I see something here that needs some attention that's worth pointing out do you see on this this is a variegated willow tree and you'll see here that we have a sucker coming up from the root and also one here on the stem this particular plant has been grafted up here at the top so this is the variety but down here is really just a wild green willow so if you excuse me for a minute I want to take care of that and also show you how to do it if this happens to your garden so here's the rootstock coming out it's very important to remove this down at the base of the plant so what we're going to do is with a shovel here is get in at the bottom of it and push down and sever it and there you take it out so that as you see I've now removed that and also there's another one round here coming out from the stem and this is what you do with it with a pruner you get in and you remove that as close as you can to the stem just cut it off like that and now instead of having green willow growing like this this variety will grow out so, so excuse the interruption but like a lot of things in gardening when you see it and it needs doing you do it there and then and then you'll be able to not forget about it and attend to things when you need to be it when they need to be attended to now first thing to do if you're going to divide your coral bells is I like to rake back the mulch here and that you can do just raking it back so that you're able to get in and see the base of the clump so I'm just raking it back as you see and then once you have it raked back and you're able to see the extent of the clump like so then with a spade or a shovel you just go around the perimeter of the plant just go around severing any roots that are around the side and just lift up the clump so that you're able to see what is there and now this is interesting if you look at the clump here notice how all of the roots are up near the surface of the clump not that much coming deeper down into the ground that shows how coral bells like to root in near the surface and also how they love this humus rich soil that it's grown in so when you're growing your coral bells two things one good drainage very very important they just do not like to have wet feet but also plenty of organic matter worked into the soil because they love this loose fluffy woodlandy type soil that goes back to the species that these were developed from which incidentally is I think about five species that are all American species so it shows the background behind these plants and what we need to do to get success from them now 
With these, I started to work with a knife. A knife is handy if you're up against something that is tough to divide. But because these have roots near the surface of the plant, if you get your thumbs just like I've done there now, you can quite literally just pull the clumps apart. I'm going to split this into about four different parts, just moving them out. And look here, remember I was telling you about how the center of the crown deteriorates. Look at the center here. This is an old woody part of it. This was part probably of the original plant when it was young. It's now old and woody and lost vigor, whereas all of the vigorous parts of the plant are out here on the perimeter. And that's why you dig them up and divide them because then you keep your plants nice and vigorous and strong growing. And of course, as well as having extra plants, you also help to keep them longer lived. That's why it's important that you do this. And now in early spring is an excellent time to do it too. So now that we have four nice, big, strong, healthy clumps, let me show you what you do to replant them back into the position. Or if you want, of course, you could start in another part of the garden. But I'm gonna put them in here because that'll help to thicken up and give a nice carpet with lots of attractive foliage. And to replant each one, dig a good generous sized hole. Excavate the soil, make sure that you dig down deep. If there's a pan or hard layer underneath the ground, break it up in the bottom I'm digging this hole now probably about a foot or maybe 15 inches or so wide by probably about the same depth. And then break it up, as I say, in the bottom so that there's a good drainage layer there so that water won't lie in the bottom of the hole. Then the next and crucial part of this, because they love plenty of organic matter in the soil and that is to add in some planting compost into the bottom of the hole and also some onto the backfill like is there and then mix that up in the bottom of the hole with the existing soil just get that so that it's nice and mixed backfill it a little bit so that it's not quite proud but probably about four or five inches or so deep and then with your newly divided clump place it in the base of the hole and then backfill the existing soil and the compost and mix that in with it if you think your clump is a little low you can raise it up a little bit like I'm doing here Make sure that the crown is going to be free draining. And if you look across the beds here, you'll see that we tend to use beds that are raised up. So that if you're in doubt about the drainage on your site, bring in some extra soil, elevate the bed, elevate the planting position like this, so that rain, and particularly after snow melt, water doesn't accumulate around the crown of the plant because that, as I say, is one of the most important things in successfully growing coral bells. And that's good drainage and plenty of organic matter. So just backfill that around the crown like I'm doing there. Just gently firm around the sides of it so that the soil is in contact with the roots and then the last thing to do is to give them a good drink of water. Putting on the water at this time of year will help to get the little soil particles in closer contact with the roots. So pour on a good generous amount. And then the last thing to do is to rake back the mulch up around the crown of the plant like it was there before, perhaps even 
supplement the mulch a little bit they like to have the mulch during the uh, summer time because that keeps the soil cooler and retains moisture too at a time when it's it's drier in the summer time now you'll notice that I didn't really use any fertilizer when I planted it that's because I don't think that they need a whole lot of extra nutrient you see when you use the organic matter as it begins to break down it releases releases nutrient so I think they get all they need if you want to you can certainly give it a light dressing and that will certainly help to keep them going but be careful not to give too much fertilizer because I think just with good soil preparation like we did that's all they need now I'm going to get on and get the other three plants here in the ground and then probably split these other ones too so now you know how you can get the best out of your coral bells what you can do to keep them growing nice and strongly and lasting longer too this is David Wilson enjoy your gardening it's good for us and it's very good for our environment as well.